Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting homemade exponential equation. You got it all. Now we have z to the power e to the power z equals negative i over pi. I find this equation interesting not because I came up with this idea but because e is kind of squeezed between two z's you know and you have to know your z's right? If you're not familiar with complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made nine videos on basics of complex numbers and a bunch of other videos on problems at different levels. I also have another channel, which is called Cyber Math. You can also check. I have number theory videos, algebra videos, and so much more. Anyway, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. How do we solve such an equation? This is pretty non-standard, right? Don't you think? One of the things you can, that you can definitely do is using the complex exponentiation. Whenever you have something like z to the power w, it can be written as e to the power w ln z, where z and w are both complex numbers. But otherwise, how do you define a complex number to another complex power, right? I mean, what is 1 plus i to the power i? You're going to write the 1 plus i i times and multiply? No. What is i times? <laughs> i is imaginary, right? How can you do something an imaginary number of times? It's not even a whole number. I mean, it's not even real. Forget about whole numbers. So that's why we have this definition with the exponential, which is pretty nice. But then brings us to another definition, which is the natural log of a complex number, and that is the complex logarithm. And I got to warn you, it is multi-valued, which means uh, you can have multiple values. And sometimes we want to stick with a single value, and that's called the principal value, OK? Cool, cool. And also, I have to tell you that the natural log of a complex number is just another complex number, OK? So if you have a plus bi, you ln it, you get something like c plus di in the same form. So let's go ahead and apply this complex exponentiation thingy to our scenario. How do you apply it to here? This is going to be our w in this case. So our expression z to the e to the z is going to turn into e to the power w, which is e to the z, times ln z. Awesome. And that's equal to negative i over pi. Such a weird number on the right-hand side. But guess what? That's not a weird number. That's actually a pretty good number. You'll see in a little bit how we manipulate it. If you knew how I came up with the problem, you would definitely solve it right away. But when you see the solution, you're going to know how I came up with the problem. So it's kind of like playing something forward and backward, right? Reverse engineering, basically. So let's take it from here. We can go ahead and natural log both sides to bring this down. That's our exponent. So e to the z ln z is just going to be ln of negative i over pi. OK. So we got to be very careful. Can I use Lambert's w function? At this point, you're probably thinking, yes, I can use Lambert's w. No, you can't. You know why? Because you can only apply it on something like t to the t to get a t, or coffee if you want to use coffee instead of t. doesn't matter. Whatever your favorite variable or drink is. But in this case, it doesn't apply because we don't have e to the z or z times e to the z. Even if, even if we had like z ln z, we could still apply it because then we could use substitution. But when you have e to the z with ln z, nope. You cannot do it. We probably have to define another function, maybe the, the product, product log, or some type of complicated, I don't know, maybe some mathematician will come up with it, and they will name it after them. Anyway, so what do you do? You just go by the definition of the logarithm on the right-hand side, right? Here's how we can do it. First of all, let's focus on this one, because the left-hand side is crazy. I don't want to deal with it. It's too hard, but why don't we focus on this? So to simplify this, I'm going to need to think about the uh, complex logarithm. How do you do the complex logarithm? If w is equal to, I don't want to use z because z is in a different position now. If w is equal to r e to the i theta, then ln of w can be defined as ln r. Remember, r is a non-negative, actually, hopefully positive real number, plus i theta. Easy, right? I mean, you just natural log a product and that's what you get. So 
we can use the same definition here to find this. So what is ln of negative i over pi? First of all, we, we need to think about the absolute value. What is the modulus? If you take the absolute value, i is gonna, the absolute value of i is gonna be one, so it's gonna be one over pi. Remember, that has to be positive. Plus i times the, mo the modulus, or I mean the argument for negative i. But uh, negative i over pi doesn't matter because negative i multiplied by something positive. So it's gonna be in the negative imaginary axis, which means its argument is gonna be negative pi over two. We rather go in this direction than that the positive direction because we usually want our principal argument to be between negative pi and pi, right? And three pi over two does not fit that criteria. So in this case, I have negative pi over two for the argument. Again, I'm going by the principal Let's just keep it simple for now, okay? Cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and set this guy equal to the other guy. So let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. Okay, so here's what we have. e to the z ln z equals one over pi. Oh, by the way, I forgot to put the ln here. Sorry about that. It shouldn't be just one over pi. It should be ln of r, which is ln one over pi. So it'll be ln one over pi and I can put a minus sign here, i times pi over two, because that's a negative pi over two, so we multiply, that becomes a negative. Okay, so far so good? Awesome. Now, here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna go ahead and turn this into something nice. First of all, notice that one over pi can be written as ln pi to the power of negative one, which is nice because we do need a negative on the outside. Bring this negative one to the front, and you can just write negative ln pi minus i pi over two. And guess what? This can be written as negative one times ln pi plus i pi over two, which is gonna be super duper nice. Awesome. Here's what we're gonna do next. This, this part is the super duper critical part because when I try to solve this problem, I kind of struggled first, I'm like, why am I not getting a good answer here? Why is this, this not working out? And then I realized, oh, I have to do this before I can solve it. This is what it is. Are you ready? First of all, we need to simplify this. What is ln pi plus i pi over two? Remember, that looks like the natural log of a complex number, right? Just like this. It looks like this, doesn't it? So you have the r and the theta. So this is r, this is theta. So what do you make of that? Pi and pi over two. Obviously, it's just i pi, right? So this is negative one times ln i pi. And then I, on the left, I have e to the z ln z. This was the first critical step. The second critical step is, because I'm looking at the right-hand side and the left-hand side, kind of look to the right and to, look to the left and look to the right again. These are two ln's. And I want these to match as well. But can I write negative one as a power of e? Absolutely. Thanks to Euler, we can write negative one actually as e to the power i pi over two. No, just i pi. Yeah, exactly. Times ln i pi, it works out. Great. And from here, what do you get? What do you make of this? It means z is i pi. And that is one of the solutions because we always went with the principal value. We ignored them. We did a lot of oversimplifications. But guess what? We got one of the solutions. Now, we're going to check with Wolfram Alpha if Wolfram Alpha can capture at least one solution like this. Let's go ahead and check it out, okay? Ready? All right. Now, Wolfram Alpha gives us a bunch of solutions. I'm like, what the heck? And then guess what? Our solution was i pi, right? I realized, okay, here, this is a very, very small number, don't you think? Very close to zero, of course. Well, from alpha is just AI or language model, whatever. It has to approximate. It's not that human beings, it can't solve a problem, at least not yet. And this is pi. You see, this is i pi, sort of. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to watch CyberMath, and bye-bye.